back to hauling manure. It's Wednesday morning, December 26th. Hope everybody had a nice Christmas. We had a pretty good time ourselves. We're backing in to uh, load manure out of the lagoon. Sean is running the crawler right now. He's sitting in a pickup just over on the right side of me here. pickup right there. Somebody was asking the other day if he just stands there when he runs it. Not quite. He's sitting in a warm pickup. I'm going to turn my PTO on, turn the pump on, let that agitate while we're loading. So that's loading, or that's agitating right now. We'll come over here and we'll Turn the pump on to load. Engage the PTO. Open up the load valve. Crank up the throttle. Got the crawler going at it again today. We use that every day that we pump manure out of the lagoon. Sean's just kind of sitting still with it right there, getting everything agitated around the perimeter. He's noticed from the other day that this is built up pretty good. Right around the hole outside, he can put the wheels down and uh, he can touch sand. So he's trying to work up what's on the edge of the lagoon and uh, he seems to be doing a pretty good job with that. He's sitting in a pickup truck right over there. So we're going to finish loading now and uh, get out on the road here. Somebody was asking the other day how we know how full the tanks are when we're filling them. There is a gauge on the back left hand side of the tanker that's hooked to an arm that's floating and of course you can see it bubbling up there. So I'm full. I'm full right now. So I can see the bubbles coming up and then there's a... Uh, gauge or a, uh, a float inside the tank hooked to an arm that is on this little indicator right here. So that lets me know how full I am. There's also a gauge in the front of the tank. Forgot to mention that one. It's right there. Um, it's got a rod that's stuck up with that. 5 8 nut welded to it. And what that is is a piece of four inch um, PVC with a cap on each end about 14 inches long with a muffler clamp around it with that rod welded to the muffler clamp and when that uh, that pipe is floating on the manure once that manure pushes the float up it pushes that rod up out of the tank now that one there I don't need to use when I'm loading at the lagoon down here but I use that one when I'm loading up above at the front pit I can't see the gauge on the back from where the tractor's sitting because the tractor's sitting like about right here but I can see that one so I use that one when we're at the uh, front pit and we use the rear one when we're loading at the lagoon and when we're loading out to the back pit so with that being said, we're going to get on along our way here. I had to stop after I loaded because I forgot to mention that other um, float that's in the front of the tank. Uh, like I said, it's just a piece of uh, PVC with a cap glued on both ends about that big with a 5 inch muffler clamp. Made them in the past with a um, the top of the rod just bent so that when the tank is empty the float doesn't just fall out of the, the little stem holder um, but then we started doing where we were just welding um, a nut on top of the rod we made them with anything from a 3 8 to a half inch uh, metal rod and we have to, you have to have enough length on top of the tank 
so that manure doesn't leak out the hole, uh, usually take a, a piece of a round rod, or a round pipe rather, well, cut a hole in the top of the tank, weld that round pipe to the top of the tank, and then make that make sure that pipe's a little bit bigger than the rod so that if you've got some dry manure that gets up in there, the tolerances aren't tight enough to where it's gonna grip against that rod and, and uh, not let that rod move. And then I usually just take a uh, washer, a half inch washer, five eighths washer, depending on what the diameter of the rod is and weld that to the top of the pipe and then uh, let your float go down in the tank about another foot so you need about two foot of a uh, rod and that uh, PVC uh, does float enough to push the weight of that rod up and uh, as soon as the manure comes up against that you can gauge yourself on how much want to put in there if the rod is all the way up in the air then you're right at the maximum fill height uh, sometimes we don't go right to the maximum fill height we will shut down just as soon as um, that gauge moves a little bit the one that's floating well I expect this to be a short video I don't foresee any problems uh, that would happen at least I hope not today so, with that being said, um, I want to thank everybody for watching, uh, and we'll see how the rest of the day goes. If something pops up, like I've said before, if something pops up, we will be sure to uh, film it. So, so we're just going to keep on uh, keeping on here. Well, we've got all six trucks running uh, for today. Alex is running the uh, Jamesway tanker 9320 on the Mayhar farm, and Joe is running the 8320 and noon tanker on the Morris farm. We're spreading in uh, Lafayette, so we've got all six trucks running. There comes Nate, truck 14. Got Jared with the W9. Norris with truck 12. And there's Sarge with truck 15. And we got Jason with number 6. Alright, Jared's gotten stuck. He's been turning around um, in this top corner of the field. He's been backing in every load, offloading, and then uh, coming right out onto the road. I've been going up the road and turning around. His tires are a little better than mine. Um, so we're going to hook the front of the C5 to the front of the W9 here. So give us a second to get hooked up here and then we'll put the camera out away so you can see it from uh, another angle.
Pulled up through and he backed in there, offloaded, and he's been able to take right off and go that way and be fine, but it's just sticky enough in here. He couldn't get moving again. I did that the other day. I pulled in right there, offloaded, and then I went to back up down in there. I couldn't get moving again, so I had to back down around and get a head start. I had to make kind of a figure eight to get out. I came back up through here, couldn't make it, and I had to go out and around and get a head start, and I come out down there a little ways. So, just so, sometimes you get into these problems. So, but we got him pulled out anyways without any problems. So, he only needed a little bit of help as it was. So, we're just waiting for the spreader to get back here now. Kerr is over in back there somewhere I can't even see him so we'll wait for him to get to us and uh, we'll get this load off loaded so we can go back and get another one we've done here is we've stalled the truck and it won't start the uh, there's a loose starter wire or something or mate right in the middle of route 20 
Well, that was quite the fiasco there. I was turning off of Martin on the 20. Nate was turning on the Naughton off the 20. And he was letting traffic clear that was coming from the opposite direction. And he stalled the truck when he went to take off to turn on the Naughton. So he went to restart the truck. The truck wouldn't start on its own. It just turned over real slow. So he jumped out to check the connection on the starter and the battery cable that went to the starter was loose. So he tried to hold the cable while I started it, but the truck still didn't have enough juice to, uh, to turn over to start. So that's why we pulled it out of the road. Actually, all we did was uh, we pull started it. And, uh, you know, it started up once we jumped it like that. But uh, it couldn't have been in a better spot. Lucky he didn't stall it in the middle of the, middle of the hill coming up through. So I'm offloading a load of manure now. That's why I keep looking out this back window because I want to make sure I don't overflow this spreader here but with that being said that's going to do it for this video hit the thumbs up leave me a comment down below subscribe if you haven't yet already and i want to thank you for watching take it easy folks we'll catch you at the next video